All right, so heavy hitters pops off, does pretty well. Popping off very well. And at what point does um, a young Mr. West, Kanye West, want to get down with the heavy hitters? How did that all come to be? Okay, so at this time, my management office is located on 38th Street. Okay, 38th and what? Uh, between 8th and 9th. Who's okay. it? Who's your manager? Renee McLean. Okay, that's what I thought. It's, it's RPM, him and Lilette Pizarro. They're, you know, I don't know if they're boyfriend and girlfriend or husband and wife at the time, but he's the creator of the Mix Show Power Summit. Mm. Okay, which is one of those big conventions. That Puerto actually, Rico with yeah. the DJs. Yeah. Remember? Puerto Rico. With the, it, let me just put it this way. I'll sum it up like this. A lot of promo 12 inches and a lot of DJs getting their dick sucked. Wait, oh, that's I was talking about the line... From the Jay-Z and Kanye Oh, no, no, I, I know you were. I know you were. But I'm just saying, I'm just talking about conferences in general. But yeah, okay. so Ye was around all that, the conferences, and the, and then one day. Just trying to get his records, like, out there? No, not, not oh, no, beats. This is early. Just he was, around. He was just making beats. He's a producer. He can rap, but no one's heard his raps yet. So I'm tight with Talib and Most Def at this time. This is around the time Fat Beats was still rocking. And I remember specifically having an argument with the with the fans of Fat Beats. I was so mad because, and Tyler went called me to check up on me because I had his back. Because I'm a new DJ getting ready to get hired on Hot 97, right? They dropped this Black Star project, so I can't wait to play it on Hot 97. But everybody in the store is like, nah, fuck Hot 97. We don't want to hear yeah. Black Star on Hot 97. And this is a true thing. The same this same shit happened to me. This yeah. is around the OK Play Player okay, era. player, yeah, yeah. Okay, this the beginning is, of the internet era, really. A hundred percent. So I'm arguing with all these people in Fat Beats, like, fuck y'all. You gonna tell me these are your artists right here that you fucking love? And if I go on the radio and play them and support them, them you're not gonna fucking fuck with them? Yeah. You guys are, this is bullshit. I never went back into Fat Beats again after that. Wow. I was so mad. I, I believe was so you. So fucking mad. <laughs> That's crazy because I would have thought that someone like one of you guys walking into Fat Beats. People would be excited to see you there. Like, oh, you're here to buy good. You're gonna support no, good shit. No, no we could actually me and Sife come from that. I know. Yeah. We actually come from that. We were playing like Necro Flow. I met and, Camillo in Fat Beats. and Fat Beats. That was the thing. That's how I know Camillo. When Bro, I was Fat, Fat Beats, Beats was located on Eighth Street by, but then by Grace Papaya. Oh, no, I was there. I that was there. So that was where we went. We went there. You know, I mean, besides Rock and Soul and I, let me tell you, spots, but I love Rock and Soul. Let me tell you that by the way. Um, they were, if you, as an out of town are going to Fat Beats, yeah. who's, you know, my parents, oh, yeah. my parents were taking me. The level I of dickheadedness. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's like a, it's Bro. like a fucking parody of, yeah. of the movie, uh, of the fucking QSAF High Fidelity. <laughs> I mean, Got you, have, hey, what's, where's the new J Live record? <laughs> It's over there, dipshit. Yeah, shut it's the, like, fuck, shut the up. fuck up. No, we sold out of the J Live record, you fucking moron. We don't even have no more. And they're not, they're not coming in for a while. Yeah, they're not coming in. Good luck. And I'm like, no, I just see one right here. They're like, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely right. So that's the tension I was dealing with, supporting. I prefer Discorama, where you didn't have to talk to, to anyone. Support Black Star, right? Okay. And then this is the time I'm still taking the train to and from the station. Uh, me and fucking Most Def or Yasin Bey now used to take the train to Brooklyn. Okay. Anyway, Crazy. so a couple of years later, maybe two or three years later, Talib was like, yo, I want to introduce you to Kanye. I'm like, who else Kanye? Producer, dude. I'm like, all right, cool. What's up with him? Oh, he's trying to get his shit on. We helping him with his raps and stuff. I'm like, all right, cool. So what I didn't realize was that, what's Kanye's first album? College Dropout. College Dropout. He's recording College Dropout down the block from the RPM offices. Okay. Because they're both located on 38th Street. All right, so he would probably just do his recording and then come to the office and nag me. And the nagging was always, yo, I know you got this heavy hitter thing. I want to be down. I'm like, we don't have artists down. Yeah, this is yeah, a yeah. DJ crew, bro. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. in my mind, I'm like, you don't fit. This is not what we're doing. <laughs> By the way, I'm noticing a problem with DJ Enough's uh, with the way of thinking in general. What? You short sell yourself on everything. You're like, yeah. no, why would you want to be down with us? <laughs> yeah. Instead of thinking, but no, no, at the time there wasn't because a reason. Because I'm humble, bro. This no, you're humble, humble and also humble he, beginnings. And also he's and also it was the beginning for him. You didn't you I know. Didn't, I had no idea who the hell know the fuck. I, this guy's from, from I wouldn't have wanted to put a random artist in my fucking DJ right. crew either. No, I get it. And I like Talib and I'm you know, like you guys are underground, you guys aren't even seeing what's happening with my space and And they're not even asking like, to be in your no, crew. So no. why would you, that's why it was weird to me. Right. That is, by the way, it, let's just be honest. It is weird. 
Well, yeah, like, oh, if I was going to put a rapper artist down, I already know most of Kwali. They'd have to go before you. Right. Because I met them through, I met right. you through them. But right. I just think it's important that we, there's so much conversation about Kanye these days. And a lot of people say, like, what happened? And obviously, talking about the political and all that crazy shit is different. But in terms of the behavioral weirdness. He changed twice for me. But this was, but just to be point out, mm. even from the very beginning, this behavior is a little weird. Like that yeah, is a yeah, yeah, very forward is. way to be. 100%. I want to be in your DJ crew. It's like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? All right. So, so maybe, maybe he understood what that meant. Maybe he didn't. Whatever. Maybe he was smart. Whatever. But it's all that. But that was happening okay. all the time. All the time. And then, I mean, he would just be in, go no, down to all, your office. All the time. Renee was like, yo, what's this dude's always coming to the office, man? All the time looking <laughs> well, for you. I mean, what's, what's, all the what's DJs. This, what's his problem, bro? All the hot DJs are next door. Why wouldn't right. I go down there? I know, man. It was just, <laughs> it was just nuts. And then, so, but when, when I think about it today, I had Common, Most Def, Talib Kweli, and Kanye West knocking on my fucking management's door every day, and I don't know why every day. So, I, it was years later that I put it together because I did a party recently at this studio location and that and the owner of the location of the studio was like this is where Kanye did his first album I said this is where he did it so I'm like oh shit so I go to the studio check out I'm, look, I'm like look, look where it's located it's down the block from the office so now I get it he reported to work to record his album but he was just trying to figure out a way to get it heard and get it Support it. And do you look back now and think like what you could have done uh, considering yeah. everyone was banging yeah, down I the door? Yeah, I could have been G and Hop, could have signed him, could have managed him, could have fucking did all that. But I didn't have my business together back then and I was still trying to be DJ and Hop. And that would have been a, a, a lot also. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, now, so so what happened? So he just keeps nagging and you're like, no, um, I'm good? Um, then one day he says, look, do me a favor, man. Just help me with this thing. I'm trying to go into a different space he gives me a snippet of his album and he's like let's put it out as mixtape what do you mean put your logo on it let's put let's put it out on a mixtape i think it's to get home the whole album yeah oh, song but it's like snippets okay he he he, he put together a mixtape for himself right and he wanted me to help him distribute it Got put it. it out so shout to ag ag that rolls with trey songs i don't know if you remember him well, anyway, AG literally went to physically all the stores in Harlem, Brooklyn, Queens, and put out the Kanye West mixtape. So, what was it? What was it called? Was College Dropout mix? Like no, it was called the uh, Get Well. Get Well. Remember, he got in the car accident, so it's the Get Well. Get Well soon. Soon mixtape. That one. Anyway, so that's the one that we're promoting, and I remember specifically. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's it. Let's hear what the beginning sounds like. We want to send a get well shout out to music producer Kanye West. He's doing fine, but he was in a car accident last week. So we just want to send him our best from over here. We That's free for one of the supports. Free. Hope he gets better oh, soon. God. And keeps doing those hot beats that yeah. he does. He does. He does. All right. In case y'all don't know, he did an incident Izzo. He did takeover. He did guess who's back. He did my joint. Good to you. Tyler. He turns the most out. It's Tyler. Give it up for my nigga Kanye West. New York City. Now, Kanye, y'all also don't know my man got skills. He's a rapper. He's on my new project. So I want him to bust it first. Can we let my man bust it first? What's up, Kanye? What's up? God, so funny. A lot of love. Well, because, because that crowd was so into Talib that he could tell them this guy's good and you're going to pay attention. It's just crazy why they have, like, beef now. Back in the late I remember, he's already. <laughs> this is the very late. No, no, this is the early. This is the early. Early uh, millennial. <laughs> early millennium. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just he was already paired up with the Rockefeller guys, but he was doing all the production for them. But I don't think nobody took him seriously no, as a rapper. They didn't. So that's which what is, he was. Which is, which is understand. I get it. I get it too, but I also hate that we do that because it's the same thing about Rock Raider. No, no, same thing. Because you came out as a battle DJ execution of turntableist first, or is where you got your first shine from, that's all you could be. Right. So we think Kanye could only be a producer because that's how it started. Right. That's the same thing 
Like it's we're all guilty of it. Yeah, people like, oh no, well that's what you are. I remember, yo, know, when I became a, trying to become a comedian, everybody, you can't become a comedian. You can't do comedy. You're a DJ. You're a fucking DJ. You can't do comedy. And I and I remembered before I was a DJ, everyone would say, you can't be a DJ. You're not a DJ. You're an airplane mechanic. You know what I mean? So right. fuck everybody. <laughs> Aviation. You know? Wait, but hold on. But you're you're also pointing out that you were one of those people, right? You said I absolutely was. Because I mean, you shit on Kanye. I, no, 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 I didn't shit. I mean, he, you know, Kanye begged to get on sound bombing he and did, Cypher. Yeah. He said, "I'll give you an acapella verse." Cypher was like, "We good, man." Okay, let me ask you a question. Yes, as a sir. as a DJ, yes, sir. Sound bombing is an album on Raucous, right? right? But it's like a it's like an one, album, but it's a like mixtape. Three, three. Right. Me and Mr. Chalk mm -hmm. from L.A. We did produce the, all the songs were produced already. They were pressed up on vinyl. So you could mix pressings. it. There's no so, way he's getting in there. So we could actually mix the album on vinyl, right? He comes to the studio on like the last day and was like, yo, can I get on this? I was like, we're done. We're literally mixing it. He goes, I'll rhyme acapella in the beginning. And I go, I don't know how that would fit. And then now I'm like, I wish I would have got him to rhyme acapella <laughs> on the beginning. I know, man. <laughs> All right, so so we continue on. So you guys do the mixtape oh, hey, together. Can I just give you some advice. Yeah. Whoever comes into your studio saying they want to rhyme, let them rhyme. That's it. Maybe record you know them. you record Re it. Record them. Because at, at, re re at least I would have had it recorded. Wait, do we have to follow this advice? Like if you and I go out to uh, the 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 concert in a couple of months rolling loud yeah and someone wants to rap for us backstage yes we, we should listen what are we what are we doing oh last time i was so mad we were with natalie at the last concert and natalie was like the guy was like let me rap for you and i was like uh and natalie's like no babe go ahead i'll film i was like oh <laughs> you love that huh <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she was like, kicks up. This is great. Dope. All dope. right, all right. So, so he was, he wasn't terrible. He wasn't terrible. Then he got very drunk. He took his shirt off. It was a long day. He was there for a long time. That's the problem. So, um, so you put out the Get Well Soon. How well received is that first mixtape? Like, I don't know it very well. Horrible. It wasn't. It, no, no. But I'm gonna, let me explain something. Horrible. Nobody wanted it. I even had people wanted to return it. And then. Maybe about a month later, I started getting phone calls from all the stores. Yo, you got any more of that Kanye West? We need it. It's really? selling out. It's going. It's Why going. they calling you? Because you're because, because you presented because it. Because we presented it. Me and AG were the ones who was were literally. Was it DJ Enough Presents? No, no. Was your it name was, on it? No, my name wasn't on it. I was just physically helping him get it. You didn't even put the logo on it? No, no, I don't think I did, no. The heavy hitter logo's not on it? No. Mm -mm. Oh, I thought Not until the album. Not until oh. the album. And then I, I forgot. It was GLC who was with him. GLC came into the, GLC was one of the guys who kind of like made me <laughs> made me what's that? It's the picture of the cover. Yeah, that's it. And it doesn't have the logo. It has no. Kanye's old logo right. with the rock with logo. The rock logo. And mm -hmm. get well soon. And him holding his rock chain in his right. hand, wearing the most early two thousands of jeans. Yeah, those jeans are coming back though. But the, then, uh, but then he uh, makes yeah. a song called Heavy Hitters for Life, and I'm like, wait, he made Heavy Hitters for Life before he was a heavy hitter. Yes, that's the crazy part. <laughs> So then, G, then GLC comes in and presents it. GLC is the other rapper yeah. on the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's from Chicago. It's his yep. homeboy he grew up with. And GL, I don't know. Talking to GL, GL had more of street cred to me. Like he was just like the dude. Like you could tell, you could tell the yeah. street, right? So I'm listening to him. Like okay, okay. And you know, I'm not a tough guy. You know, but this guy's really aggressive. And it's like we could be do this and we could do this. He was making a compelling case. 100. percent Okay. And I hear the record. I'm like, oh, that's dope. So I'm kind of like feeling a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, this could be something. And I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it, whatever. And I kind of left it at that. Wasn't really expecting much. And then uh, and then one of the studio sessions on a playback, this is when like people would present their album. Mm. And it was like, it was one of the moments where like Kevin Lyles was there, Michael Kaiser, the industry was there for the first time. But it was big. It was. It felt good to me. And I was invited to listen to the project. To Kanye's album? Yeah, Kanye's mm -hmm. album. And um, I'm sorry, I'm saying this out of order. But the first the first gathering was at 4040 for the drop of In the Wire. The Wire. Through the, uh, wire. Through the, wire. the wire. It was okay. a video, whatever. And in and, and the documentary, they show that I'm there, but you don't see me. But okay. I'm there. I'm there in, in the space. I'm oh, you like got that. cut out of the documentary? I got cut out Who the documentary. Who else did that happen to? <laughs> a lot of people. Me. I, what yeah, part for you? The part in front of Ruckus. 
Oh yeah, yeah. A slice. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> but anyway, so that that happened, and um, I didn't really pay it too much mind. But when the, the mixtape started get um started buzzing, I was like, yo, this could be a thing. And then I was his direct go to to the radio, mm. and this guy started feeding me everything and feeding. And feed his me. records or like his others, records, even everything, stuff he produced. everything, feeding me everything. Wow. I'm like now, now yeah. remember, I'm the new guy at the station, but right. I'm getting all the heat. Oh, yeah. So crazy. Kanye starts being your link to get in this new hot shit. As he's blowing up, it's making you look great. Amazing timing is everything. Amazing. I'm looking like the kid, and I'm playing like the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, oh, and those are two those, words. Those, two words. Those are ill records, and yeah, before yeah, they yeah. came, before they come out, and I'm like, woo! Oh, get them high. Yeah, all that, all that, all that before everybody. And so, and so at this, so at this point, you now like fully realize how good he is. Like, yeah, you're like this guy's actually yeah, really. No, he's dope. But I'm just so happy in the moment. I'm not securing my bag with the management and the. I could do this for you and have this hit. My lawyer sent this, sign this. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just happy. Yeah. So how does the logo get on the album then without there being any like real business? G and Hop were part of his management mm -hmm. and then Plain Pat were always trying to show love. You know what I'm saying? Until they were like, look, man, they knew how much I meant to their project and they were just like, let's put that logo on there. So I didn't, they didn't ask for clearance or anything. I just saw it. I was like, Wow. Now I'm even hotter. You said earlier, kind of in passing, when we brought up Kanye, that he changed twice for you. Yes. So when did the first change occur? And and also, I did. I have been told before by Cat. This 60 Minutes shit right now. You hear this guy? <laughs> yeah. When did, did, did Kanye once change for you? You love when I, when I get too serious. Yeah, you get so wait, no, no, but Cass did tell me at some point recently, like, for a long time, you were really still in touch with him a lot. Like, it yeah. lasted for a while. So, yeah, how did, your, how did the relationship progress? Let me say okay, that. Okay, so... The first change for me was ultimately when his mom passed away. Um, but even with that, when he was still dating Amber, he would come to our events still, like softball games that we would have. Remember? Wait, you really did have softball games? Well, yeah, because... <laughs> uh, you remember that. <laughs> you, yo, you, you did it to played yourself. The, no, bro. You did it to yourself. <laughs> yo, remember, DJ Threat passed away, and we had a celebrity oh, softball yeah, yeah, game yeah, yeah, every yeah, year. And didn't you play yeah, the yeah, pimples? Did that ever happen? I made that up. No, no, no. That never happened. Never. That'd be a, so that'd that, be a that's what it was. And we used oh, to have... You know, I used to have Ebro used to be on our team. Ebro oh, used that's to play right, for the heavy hitters, and yeah. it was dope. It was just a... Where they kind of like show love and then and he and, and he would come to all that kind of stuff. He would come to the stuff. Him and Amber would come and they'd be with us and hanging out, regular people. Yeah, it was always amazing. And then once he got with Kim, I lost him. It was gone. New yeah. management numbers changed. No more cell phone. Yeah, he got I'm into like, the matrix. Just, just emails. And then now it was weird shit. Now, so I had like his security guards calling my phone. Kanye's at the hotel. He wants to know if you come by. He has some stuff for you. What do you mean? <laughs> so I didn't get it all the time, but he just wanted to keep the relationship. On the, some level. On some level. He was building his home in California, but he was staying at the Mercer Hotel the Mercer, somewhere yeah. downtown or mm -hmm. something like that. And he'd be like, yo, e, I got something special in the world. He's sitting here. Come see me. <laughs> like, all right, cool. And what would it be? Just music. You know, whatever. Just I want to play it just, it just kept going. It just kept going. So all that time, he would always still feed you music. Always new feed music. me music. And then, that's, that's so cool. even, so real quick though, so, the, so you said there was a change, but even after it got weird in the Kim era and things changed, he still was give, playing you music. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. But when not, a little bit. That like was what's something you bit. got early, like Watch the Throne or something? I mean, all that stuff. I was the Good there. music stuff. I was, all, I was around all of it, you right. know, because also this is my beginnings of getting down with Mike Dean. And mm -hmm. I didn't know Mike Dean for long, but Mike Dean became a heavy hitter. And I was like, oh, Mike Dean's this guy. Mike Dean's doing a lot of mixes for him and doing a lot of the tech stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. He's a producer, but he's doing a lot of tech stuff too. So Mike Dean became my guy also. And Mike Dean was always downtown and always staying at an apartment. Mike Dean became a heavy hitter? Yeah, Mike Dean's a heavy hitter too. What? Yeah. What the? F what is this? What is heavy hitters now? Yo, bro, we, <laughs> it's, it's, we a serious, we a serious thing, pop. Yo, it's it's, it's, it's DJ enough. Kanye yeah. West, Mike Dean, mm -hmm. Mike Dean, <laughs> Mike Dean, man, Mike, Mike Dean, Dean is Mike Dean's is somebody you should have here. Oh, oh no, no, yes, no, we yes, know. we no. really should have here. Like, do you know anyone that knows him that could help <laughs> us get him? <laughs> I actually do. 
Because I, I know, you know like, what? You know what? Cat Remember me? I used to DJ for Biggie. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know. I used to DJ for Biggie. I used to DJ for Biggie. Yo, Mike Dean is phenomenal. I think Karen. I think Karen Wright's been helping out Mike too. Hundred yeah. percent. There's a new artist named Stash. Yeah, yeah. And Karen yeah. Wright's been helping him out. Mm -hmm. So we we should we could definitely get him. We should. All right. So so Kanye's still he's still around, right. but in a weird, different, yes. getting calls from security guards kind of way. I'd always I would always question him like, Yo, why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? And then he would try to break it down to me like, I'm not insane. I'm actually very smart. I know what I'm doing. He. And then he would. I, I forgot the. I forgot the references he would use, but it was like somebody who we all thought was insane, but in actuality they were very smart. Right. He was trying to say crazy that, like that, a fox. That's what he was kind of like doing. Did you, when he would come do things like Summer Jam, were you? Did you always sort of remain the point person for Hot when things no. related to Kanye? No, no. After, after that it was just however he dealt with it. With the okay, got it. Whoever. But would he make sure to 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 get time with you? Like if he came to do a Summer Jam, bit. like there was one year. He performed. He didn't do that well. What was the year that he bought? He he put he brought Jay Z out. Death of Auto. No, no death. No, I, no there was, was a year I DJed for Kanye on Summer Jam, and he had he Jay Z as his guest, and that was the one where Jay's there for like two minutes standing, no oh, music yeah. playing. Yeah, that was that, that, was, that was, was the Death of Auto Tune year. That was the year he that, that was the year he battled Swiss Beats. I think no, I, no, 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 that was no, different year. Different, different year. year. This is when Jay. Just um, stood there. Yeah, stood there and, and then raised his arm and this side of the crowd made noise and then raised his arm and this side of the crowd made noise. And they were specifically looking at me like, don't you dare start the music. Right. Like it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a cue. Yeah. But then the cue passed its point and I'm like, what do I do? Yeah. Oh, because but this then, is, um, this is uh, Diamonds Are Forever Remix. Right. And he's uh, standing there. Yeah. And oh, so Jay, this isn't the auto And here. Jay's getting so much love. It's mm. crazy. I never, it was crazy. I'm like, don't you dare play the music enough. Do not cut this. Yeah, it, keep it was a going. moment, bro. It was a moment. So yeah. I had to hold tight. <laughs> and then you eventually bring in Diamonds Are Forever. Then, we, then it goes off and it's crazy. Because I, it I got it from here, yay, damn. Mm -hmm. But that was auto-tune also, I think. Same no, year. No, I don't think it's the same year. All I know is I think huh? he had, they had all, all white. So. so maybe all white. But that shit wasn't. Know. So you were DJ for Kanye. Yeah, that at that, that time, one for that. How one. how many times did you DJ for him over the years? Not a lot. Couple here and there. Okay, not a lot though. Um, and so you said he changed again. Then there was a second change. No, that was the second change. It was only with oh, his mom passed, passed and, and then Kim. Yeah, those are the two changes. Mm -hmm. And when was the last time you had any real interaction with him? Well, it's been a minute. It's been a long time. The but my but my moment of fame was was. He invited me to the garden to a concert, and I went. And during that night, he gave me, Clark Kent, a bunch of people in the industry flowers on 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 stage, and I thought that was amazing. He wanted me to go to backstage, and I was like, I'm not going backstage. I wasn't a fan of backstage. I always felt like backstage was a mess. Too many security, the dudes, the groupies. It's annoying. It was just... It's, it's annoying. annoying. There's this not a thing for me. There's a headache that comes with yeah, it for yeah, sure. There's a, there's but that is cool. Back there, though. But that is cool that he did that. A hundred percent. Does it make you like watching the doc and then watching everything that's happened since? I would imagine that you're like it must be kind of sad to see the whole thing play out the way it is. Yeah, it hurts. But because like you see the good, like I'm just a fan. I know he's. I know in his heart he's a good dude, but the choices he's made are just it's just stupid. And I wish somebody was next to him. Who could tell him what's what? Did he never? Was there ever anyone that you saw that could truly get his ear? Like if they if in they, the very beginning, I thought like John Monopoly, yeah, and I thought like Don C and Plain Pat, those guys were his day ones. Yeah. But those were, those were his is guys. It, is John still around him or no? Uh, no, no, I don't uh, know. I don't know who's. I think around he's like him. in and out. Last time I don't I know who's around. Seen John Monopoly, he still had dealings with him. Yeah, I feel like he brings people in and out though, and it's hard because I how do you it. say no? I believe it. You know, but like. It's not like he is playing Pat well, with him not, every day anymore. You're not ever like pushed all the way out. There's no like, hey, I no, no longer need your services. Yo, it's just he fades.